Hello and welcome <laughs> to the Knitting Samurai Plus One video podcast. I am your host, Stephanie. This is episode 52. Please don't call me Stephanie. I prefer Steph. Um, episode 52, juxtaposition. <laughs> it is Tuesday night. April 30th after work so you know what you get when you get an after work Stephanie just a little giggly and a little silly although I did go down to the cafeteria at work at 2 30 and got one of those big double shot uh, Starbucks mocha can drinks and I drank that just for you <laughs> and my coworkers were like what are you doing drinking that at 2 30 in the afternoon Whoa. So, I should be nice and awake for you, although I'm not promising anything with the tongue and the words. They were, they're getting all mixed up, and this is take four for me. So, hopefully I can, can go a little further this time. <laughs> um, let's see. I posted the sunrise for you guys. Don't watch it if you're not interested. Don't feel obligated. I was watching the sunrise and I thought I would share it with you and you might enjoy it. And actually part of me was like, and if I record this, it's I can go to Owl's Head anytime I want and what by watching it. So I put the pieces together. It was actually 45 minutes long. I think I started a little early with the recording, but um, I cut some pieces out. I don't know if you could tell or not. I watched it with Steve after it was done. And I don't know. So watch it, don't watch it, tell me what you think. Or don't. Whatever. I'm easy going. Easy like Sunday morning. So, let's talk about what I'm knitting. What, how about, or we could talk about what I'm not knitting. But I think what I'm knitting is more interesting. So, the, <laughs> the peasy and the grape sweaters that I'm knitting for myself did not get me love this week. And unfortunately, I really, like, I'm still motivated to knit them, but I... I have some deadline knitting I have to get through and I need to focus up, focus up. So I'm going to be working on baby blankets from now until the end of time, it seems like, oh my goodness. So the first baby is not due until mid-June. And I thought that meant I had plenty of time and then I remembered, oh no, you have a baby shower several months in advance or a month in advance in this case. So. I need to be done knitting the first baby blanket by May 11th, and um, <laughs> baby blankets are not hard, but they can take a little time. It is a blanket, after all. I watched the Knit Girls review 60 Quick Baby, baby Blankets, the Cascade book, and immediately was inspired to cast on several, several, several blankets in here, and even more than they mentioned, because 60 is a lot, and there's a lot to find inspiring in this. And so I ordered the book, and then I started digging around for Lion Brand Cottonies, because that's the blanket out of all the blankets that I knit for Roland. I'm counting in my head. I really think I only knit him three blankets. But anyways, that's the one I, that's our go-to. I don't even think about it. Wash it, throw it, throw it in the washing machine, throw it in the dryer, fold it up, use it again. And it looks just as good as it did last February when it came off my needles and it's getting washed because we rotate through his blanket. So it's been loved, love mauled, balled up, drooled on, chewed on, you know, gotten some serious abuse. For over a year now and it's it's a gorgeous yarn gorgeous blanket so that's the op art blanket i knit for him anyways so i can't recommend lion brain cottonese highly enough i don't really um notice that i'm knitting with cotton which is a compliment you know you knit a dishcloth and by the time you're done you're like oh my hands it has no give in this yarn and i don't feel like that when i'm knitting cottonese and it's probably the 50 50 cotton acrylic so whatever the reason is it works for me so the first baby blanket that I decided to do because there are like 10 in here I want to know um, the first one is the graphically gray by Wilma graphically gray. by Wilma Pierce Pierce and that is knit on size 9 
using Cascade 220, so which is obviously a worsted weight yarn. The cotton ease is classified as an Aran weight, so I didn't feel any need, any problem using the size nine, 5.5 millimeter needles. Um, I ordered the colors that match the nursery. <laughs> so the nursery is gray, charcoal, and teal, but they don't know what they're having. Uh, <laughs> so I ordered a charcoal and a gray and a yellow and a pale green and this red. I went a little crazy, but I, I got a good deal on them. They were like four fifty dollars a skate, so it was hard to pass up. Um, so I ordered a bunch of them, and my intention was to do this in the charcoal and gray, and then outline it with the teal, and it would match the baby's room. But the cascade, the cottonies, really only comes in a baby blue or a robin's egg blue. So I'm not sure what to do for the teal. And then when I was looking at the charcoal, I'm like, ah, that's so dark. I can't knit a baby blanket in almost black. I just, I can't do it. It hurts my soul. And I know that they're the type of people that would not like a pastel baby blanket. So I sort of compromised and did the maize yellow with the gray, the stone is the color, right? And you can see here, let me pull it. So there's half of it. Um, no, half of it widthwise, not lengthwise. I've done a quarter of the blanket. So here's my plan. I'm going to do it in these colors and then I'm going to trim it with red. I know, it's very high contrast, but I think the baby will like the contrast, number one. And number two, I think that that's sort of unisex, throwing in the red. It's not too, I don't know. It'll be an interesting blanket. <laughs> They're not going to get another one like it. So that's my plan. We'll see how I do. Um, I have to be done by May 11th, like I said. And then after that, I don't have this marked, but see, really what I had in mind for them was this one. But then once I read the instructions, there's a lot. Each of those are squares, I think 16 squares. Yeah, 16 squares you have to sew together. I'm a knitter, I'm not a sewer, and I can knit a lot faster than I can sew and be happy under a deadline. So that'll have to be for somebody else's little one. I'm looking for the gingham pattern because I really like that one. And that's probably going to be next. I also like the black one. I should be sharing and not just flipping. I don't know why I'm whispering. Yeah, so the really cool ones look like they're going to take a little longer. That was my take on it. So. The uh, October pregnant ladies are going to get the nicer blankets, but that's okay. So the gingham's going to be next, and I was thinking that might be nice with the um, the light blue and hot pink that I got. The next one's a girl. I don't know. I have to think about that. I could do the lime green and the hot pink. That would be fun. Oh, I know her room's going to be by, but I have to think. We're thinking. And meanwhile, we're knitting. I'm knitting this as fast as I can. So that is causing everything else to kind of go by the wayside. But before things went on the wayside, by the wayside, can you see my pajama pants? I sure hope not. <laughs> but if you can, that's what my pajama pants look like. Um, in my zigzag stitches bag is my Franken dinosaur. So this is the um, Terrence the T-Rex, sort of, plus three other patterns that I'm working on to match Dinosaur's blanket for Roland. So you can see I finished his head and I sewed on his eyes. Um, and then I knit four of the spikes off the back. So I did that. And then, where's the other thing? I knit a arm and a hand, and I made it have points, so that'll go there. And is he not the cutest thing ever? I love his crazy wonky eyes. They're not straight. My mom, I showed them to my mom, and she was like, oh my god, his eyes aren't straight. So we were laughing about that. Um, yeah, so really at this point, I need to knit a second arm and a hand, the tail, and four more spikes for the tail. The spikes are kind of tedious. They're little and tiny. It reminded me of knitting fingerless mitts. You know, 
what was that pattern? Fetching? Knox? Knox. Where you cast it on for the four fingers and then you knit, you know, you join them together and go down. That's, um, I knit those for my dad and knit in the same, or I think it was that same green. <laughs> that's funny. That's probably why the whole time I was knitting these little things, I was like, mm -hmm. mitts. I don't knit them. Not fingerless mitts. Fingerless gloves? I guess is what they are. Yeah, anyways. Tired brain. La, 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 la. <laughs> so the um, yarn I'm using for this is Cascade Heritage. I'm knitting it on US size ones, 2.25 millimeter needles. And the Terrence, the tap dancing T-Rex is designed by Rebecca Danger. There's my blanket. And no, Roland has not seen the the T Rex because I'm afraid if he does, I will never ever get it back and be wow. able to survive. So, next to show you are my goth socks. So this is, in case you're wondering, this is one of my Pit Loop Owl bags. I have a couple custom order bags coming in from Bird Leg bags. They shipped. I got the notice, so you will see them next week. But in this lovely bag, it's my purse knitting, is one gothic sock, goth sock, and this is Inspiration Dye Works in her basic sock base. Uh, the colorway is goth sock, and no, goth stripe, I'm sorry, goth stripe. And I'm knitting it on US One's 2.25 millimeter needles and here's my second one I did a little toe. toe it's good knitting for hanging out outside with the family while they chase Roland and I can just kind of have my eyes up what's going on what's going on so yeah those are coming off <laughs> stripey socks stripey socks oh I just realized this is my April socks these are my April socks for the uh, Stocking at Zombies, and I'm not going to have them done in time. Oh well. Baby knitting takes over. Um, what else do I have to tell you about? I have to tell you that the swap, yarn swap that we're doing over in the uh, RAV group is going swimmingly. I'm so happy to see everyone's conversation and teases and what they're doing. I will tell you that personally, I have everything together except the yarn. I'm waiting for it to arrive. And once it arrives, it's out the door. It's ready to go. So, yay. If you're in the swap, please try and get your packages mailed by May 6th so that our swappy, swap, swap, so that the person receiving it will get them mid-May. So that'll be a nice treat for everybody. And May 6th is a Monday. So that's your like last chance. Mail it that day. <laughs> I received my Into the World shipment for this month. I don't know. Do you watch Game of Thrones? I do. I read the books. I was beyond words excited when I saw that the next three months were going to be um, Game of Thrones. Like, well, I assume it's three months. Her themes usually are for three months, but anyways, and then I went through all the pictures that people posted, and I was like, oh, oh. And secretly, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, Chris, if you're listening, psst, do something with Lannister colors, because maybe they're my favorites. I know, my mother is completely disgusted with me. How can you like Cersei? How can you, Stephanie? How can you do this to me? And I'm like, Mom, if you read the books, you would have way more sympathy for her. But she gets this. And when I showed it to her, she was like, ah, oh, actually I should hold it this way. Sansa. Isn't it gorgeous? <laughs> I think it's gorgeous. So this is Into the World. It's her three-ply superwash merino fingering color uh, base. What's the name of it? Ol oh, I can never say that. Olandi? I don't know, but it's gorgeous. I was like, what can I knit? What can I knit right away? Can I make, I can make a 
baby hat. But it's like, this part goes with their room. <laughs> oh, but isn't it pretty? Don't you love you, Yarn? I love you, you Yarn. That's nice to get. <laughs> okay. And then I have an FO to show you. I know. You're like, what? How did you get an FO? You showed us everything that you were knitting on, clearly. There was nothing else last week. How did you knit something in a week and get it done? Well, let's talk about the juxtaposition. Uh, last time I talked about the Drizzle Hat by Mel. Mel Ski Knits, Mel. Single Handed Knits, Mel. And I talked about the yarn I wanted to use, which or I wasn't sure which one to use. I ended up using the Cascade Cash Vero DK in the gray color. And you can see that this is the large super slouch version. Super slouch. I love it. I love it. I love it. I don't know why. Well, I do know why. It's This hat is like the perfect combination of addictive knitting and the softest yarn I've ever knit with and I just want to knit more. I just want to knit with it all the time. And so I blew through this pattern in no time whatsoever. I didn't leave in the ends. And I wore, it, I wore it all day on Sunday with the ends hanging out and said, I don't care, I don't care. So the juxtaposition about this is that the yarn is a 55% merino, 33% acrylic, and 12% cashmere. How do you put, how do you have the gall to put cashmere and acrylic together? <laughs> I just, I don't get it, but it was awesome to knit with. Awesome. So, um, I know it, they classify it as a super fine acrylic. Maybe that had something to do with it. Maybe the cashmere offset it enough. I don't know, but I thought it was a super interesting yarn and my hands were singing the entire time I was knitting with it on US size 5, 3.75 millimeter needles, and it's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. I have a hard time. I knit hats, and I'm kind of fussy. Like, I finished the pebble beanie, but I wasn't wild about it. I won't wear it. It's going to go in the gift box, I'm pretty sure. And then, well, the hat I generally wear, I knit three years ago. It's not that I haven't knit hats in the last three years. I just don't like the end product but I really like this one. So um, I highly, highly recommend it. Pattern was well written, easy to follow. Even like little complicated things, you know, watching your yarn overs to make sure that you don't lose one. She was on it ahead of it, planning ahead and giving pictures and how to's. I don't know. It's just very thoughtful of what the knitter might need. Um, pattern, yarn, finished object, love it. I would totally knit another one. I don't want to knit another one right away, but in a few months from now, oh yeah, oh yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, that is all for me for this week. Um, do you want to see some rolling? <laughs> I took a really cute video, what I thought was a really cute video of him playing in the backyard with his push tricycle and talking to me and climbing all over the thing. And I realized when I watched it that the wind was blowing just too much to make that feasible. And plus, I don't think you can understand what he's saying. I can understand what he's saying. I'm his mom. But <laughs> it might not be interesting to you to see a kid on and on and on. But maybe it is. I don't know. Um, the other video, the one I'm going to share with you, is him picking dandelions. So, he's really big into the Barney cleanup song. Like, no matter what he's doing, middle of a temper tantrum, anything, you just start singing that song, he stops, and he starts finding things to pick up. It's hilarious to watch him do this, and clearly it's something he learned at day camp. Because I, I mean, I, I knew about the song and started singing it, and he knew it, everything. He knew exactly what to do. So he learned it somewhere and not from me. So anyway, so, 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 are you drinking with the souls? <laughs> um, um, instead of so. <laughs> I can't do it. 
talk. I'm trying not to say so. <laughs> we were outside. <laughs> and, um, I don't know. I, he likes things picked up. He's a little OCD about it. And the dandelions really bother him. So, like, he will be riding along or walking around along and he sees a dandelion and he has to go pick it up. So he was plucking dandelions and he'll have handfuls of them, like 20 in his hands and he's walking around doing whatever he's doing but he's got all the dandelions, they're not on the lawn anymore. So it's pretty cute, pretty cute if I may say so myself. I think he's cleaning up because the yellow doesn't go. He has probably 20 dandelions. <laughs> Well, well, well. Bro, bro, what are you gonna do with all those dandelions? Can you throw them? Throw them. No, don't eat them. And we have a Linus, he's still, mm -hmm. yeah, he's there and Mac is sitting right next to him, so I should be sitting next to them working on my baby blanket, so that's what I'm going to do, leave you for the night, hope you have a great 10 days or so until we talk again, and take care. <laughs>